and welcome to the Writer's Corner Live Show. Here on the Writer's Corner Live Show, we connect authors from around the world to each other and to their readers. Readers are able to find and explore new authors to love. You will meet seasoned as well as new aspiring authors. We invite you now to listen to the backstory of our featured author for the week, none other than Robert E. Kearns. Don't go away. We'll be right back. If you are just joining us, welcome to the show. I am your host, Brigitte Limbanda. I am a live video camera confidence coach. I host and produce live video shows that help brands, entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and of course, authors share their stories. I am a responsible social media advocate, and on this show, we bring you the backstories of authors and aspiring authors. My co-host is Mary Elizabeth Jackson. Mary is an award-winning author of the Poolicious Children's Book Series. She's working on another book as well as writing a movie screenplay. Mary is a mom and uh, to three beautiful humans, and she's also a wife. In addition to that, Mary is also a special needs and disability advocate, and she lives in Nashville in the USA, and I am down under Cape Town in South Africa. So if you're watching us live, do let us know where you are watching us from, and also type in hashtag live, and that way we know that you watched us live on the show, and if you're watching on the replay, type in replay, so we know that you caught this on the replay. Mary, welcome to the show. Good morning, and it's good evening where you are, and it's really, well, yeah, it's still morning time here where I am, so I'm excited today because Robert is one of our buddies and uh, our pals in the author world and good friend, and he is all the way in Ireland, so we're super excited because you're in South Africa, and I'm in the U.S., and he's in Ireland, and we all get to come together and talk and chat and just have some fun, you know? I know. I love that with live streaming, we can connect to people all over the world, irrespective of where you are. It literally removes the walls and we can, wherever we've got an internet connection, we can connect with authors around the globe. So that is fantastic. So Robert is the author of um, Hi Brazil, Island of Eternity, a novel that received critical praise. And the book also received five star pick from the reader's favorite. And in addition to that, he's also composed the anthologies, the book of mostly gibberish. Got to ask him about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says there's some good stuff in there as well, apart from the gibberish. So let's ask him about that. Yeah. And uh, then he's also composed poems and short stories, volumes one and two. And in addition to that, he's also written several short stories that were published as ebooks. A man of many mm. talents, dare we say. Mm -hmm. And then he says um, his work has received praise from both the reader's favorite and also Book Angel in the UK. And Robert, as you said, lives in Dublin in the UK. And mm. he's busy working on his second novel. Yes, we're excited. And... He's looking for, he is looking for a publisher. So if anybody's watching, if anybody's watching the replay and somebody knows somebody who is interested in our lad that's coming on, can we call him lad? He's a pal, he's a lad, he's, you know, he's awesome. Uh, you know, reach out to us. You can reach out to us. We can reach out to him. You can probably also find him. You know, we'll, we'll let you know near the end of the show where you can find him. So. Oh, absolutely. Shall we invite him onto screen? Yes, Absolutely do that.
Robert, welcome to the show. Hello. It's hey, did you like that wonderful. intro? Did you like that intro with your big face moving up I across did. the well, screen? I was like awesome. perusing my own chin there for a minute. Um, <laughs> I get some surgery. Yeah, yeah we don't. We don't have. Out. We don't have pancake number five on live stream, so. No, I thought that was so cool. It was like being on the big screen. Oh, I love it. Yes, it's awesome. I, I didn't get. I didn't get such wonderful treatment this time. Can you believe it's been a year since we talked last? Um, it's, no. It's exactly almost exactly a year ago. I think it Has it really? Yes. Oh my wow. gosh! So this is a celebration. This so is this awesome. is the one anniversary of our of our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh um, my goodness, Mac! I've got so much to talk about. Um, really excited. Lots of stuff going on since we last talked, and uh, great to be able to, to to be able to be back on your show just to let everybody know what's been going on for the last year because you know quite a bit's happened and. Uh, Oh, very exciting. Really, really exciting stuff. So I'm delighted to be here and looking forward to getting stuck into it. Oh, gosh, Wonderful. we're so excited. I think Bridgetti wants to start with your uh, the book that uh, she has a question for you about. Yes, the book of mostly gibberish. Yeah. Is that a, I, is that a, I, 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 I want to talk about that. But yeah, is that a food? That food that or? Well, Tell everybody, uh, why did you want to become a writer? Oh, we're not going to talk about gibberish. <laughs> okay. We are, we are, we're getting there. Okay. That, that's the next question. That's the next question, right? Well, I've, I, I think I've said this last year. I've, I've always, you know, had the ambition to write, and uh, finally got around to doing it there a couple of years ago, with uh, High Brazil Island of Eternity, which we spoke about last year, and uh, doing the show was fantastic. I, I got a reader's favorite five star review for the book. Um, you know, it's it's been great. It's been just a, it's been a good year to at least um, get a book out into the world and get started. And um, you know, I think once you've done one, you can kind of go on to do more. You always kind of this time last year, the book actually hadn't had a release date, so I had my author's copies. But once you get it out there into the world and all, you keep saying to yourself, "Well, you know, I've done it once. I'm going to keep on going." So. <laughs> That's what I've been doing, and, and and I think that's a good thing about being a writer is that um, if you really want to write, you'll keep on writing. You, right. Some people, right. Uh, I've, and I've been talking to people throughout the year who want to write stuff, and uh, you know they're kind of looking upon their current project or whatever it is they're they're doing as being the end of something, and I try to lead them in a different direction and say this is not the end of anything. This is just the beginning. So don't be thinking that, you know, you get this done and then that's it. You'll never write anything again. Um, look forward to the writing and look forward to doing what you're doing and look, look to the future for your other projects. And I've been kind of doing that myself in that, um, yeah, I kind of probably didn't do anything for a few months after I wrote the book. But I did get stuck back into other stuff then soon after. And uh, I think that's great. It's it, it keeps you going. It keeps the creative brain working, and uh, gets the juices going as well. So, you know, I, I love the idea that I'm writing stuff and continuing on with what I've been doing. And it's it's not so much that I've put my old book into the background and gone away and you know left to gather dust. It's still out there, but um, as I said, I've kind of moved on to other things. Uh, that have been really exciting and some current work that's <clears throat> super exciting, super exciting for me because I feel that it's really good. Which is the second novel that I've been working on. So it's been all busy, but all do you have a, do you have a title? Wonderful. Do you have a title for the second one? Yes, I do. I've had a title now for a while, and it's called Crab with two B's. Okay. So it's C R A B B, but that is actually the name of a little town in Texas. Don't oh wow! Keep that kind of. <laughs> okay. But yeah, I lived in Texas for a long time. I lived in Texas for nine years. So this is an American novel, really, mostly an American novel, and it's somewhat, uh, it's somewhat. Uh, what would you say? I'm one of the characters in it, except it's a fictionalized version of me, 
but it is me and um just a few little additions and a few little things around the edges but uh essentially i am one of the characters in my own book which is an interesting experience to, <laughs> to write a fictional novel with you in it so anyway it does feel good though it all feels really good i'm very that happy is, with that. that's really cool so we're dying to hear about the yeah. book of gibberish what is the book of gibberish all about oh, the book of gibberish. give us give us the scoop right. on that but the book of gibberish you see, all summer long, I took a break from crab. Um, I just felt like I needed to get away from it for a little bit. Not that there was anything wrong with it, but I wanted to make sure that I had the ending correct. And I wanted to get that straight in my head. So for a couple of months there in the summer, I just started writing some other stuff. So I kind of got into poetry this year as well. And um, I joined the Irish Writers' Centre in January, which is a fantastic group of people. And we meet there every Saturday in the Irish Writers' Centre for the Ink Slingers Writing Group. So I met loads of good people and there's some storytellers, there's some poets and whatnot. And I think from being there, I started to write some poetry. And uh, so I was writing some serious poetry, which is one of the little books I produced, poems and short stories. I have a volume two of that as well. And that was poems, little, little short sketches, some sort of short stories. And uh, from that, I moved on to some other poetry, which were a little bit more lighthearted. And so every one of them had gibberish in the title um, to signify that they were kind of silly and fun. <laughs> and so I decided to call the book, The Book of Mostly Gibberish. But then in a subtitle, I put in with some good stuff too which is a few short stories, some funny sketches, and it's a little bit of a combination of everything. It's silly poems, it's fun sketches that are kind of little short plays, and it's uh, four or five uh, stories, which I think the readers will enjoy. It was a lot of fun to write. There's some serious stuff in there as well as the fun stuff, but that's why I call it the book of mostly gibberish, because of the poems uh, that are completely bonkers and then with some of the good stories as well so okay so i'm raising my hand I'm, oh there's some feedback i'm i'm raising my hand because i want to ask you if you will read one of your gibberish poems so we know what you're talking about can you do that can i do actually you're not going to believe this i you i <laughs> don't the have one, one. <laughs> the one copy of my book of gibberish is in my mother's in my mother's house she <laughs> borrowed it and hasn't given it back to me yet I was, I was supposed i was supposed to get it back by now and i haven't she's still stuck on all the gibberish so she's uh she's been reading away she actually likes it she thinks it's quite good so um i don't have that but i do have something i could read from this okay yeah read something. That? yep yeah let's do that okay i'll read out this is a poem that i've read um I read it before, let's see here. Let's see here, I'll find something that I can read. Not too difficult. Oh, right, this is one that I read out before somewhere else and it went down really well. So I think I'll read it again if that's okay. Now it's not gibberish, so don't laugh. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be taken seriously. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not the most serious person in the world, but I do write some serious poetry at times. So I have to put on, I have to put on my serious voice for this one, okay? okay? This is called The Last of the Barbary Lines, okay? Are we ready? I'm broken, battered and old. My mane, once bold besides brazen. It's today matted, twisted and tangled. Faded from its former glory. These fangs in my prime, pointed, sharp and brutal, are now blunted as well as shorn of severity. My claws the same, dulled by time and the attrition of a thousand scraps atop of kills. I roam with melancholy strides these Atlas mountains in search of a meagre meal where before I feasted on game fit for a week. This belly, once full with the meat of a fruitful day, now shows my ribs and a coat which reveals the innumerable, innumerable scars of a lifetime. The pride, all gone, shot with the arrows of man, are hauled off in nets for the entertainment of a circus. I've no mate to help pass the lengthy nights, nor a companion to wander our ancient trails. 
Neither is there a friend to share in the majesty of an African sunrise or view that sun settle on the distant horizon. No cub to watch over or family to protect, no rivals to keep at bay. I'm isolated in wait of a death that must arrive. I'll pass on to the heavens, minus the comfort of a caring lip or the brush of a head against mine. For I am the end of my tribe and the last of the Barbary lines. That's my poem. Wow. Did you like, Did you like that? Yes, very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that's that's in one of my things. I've been a busy boy all summer, really busy. And one of my short stories um, at the weekend, which was called Fourth of July, it got a five it got five stars from readers' favorite. And I just got that on Saturday. I was absolutely thrilled about it. And I wrote that, as you can probably guess, somewhere around the fourth of July. <laughs> <laughs> And um, the review came through there just a couple of days ago, and it really cheered me up because I was kind of having one of those dull. Ireland was playing a rugby match on Saturday morning. They were getting absolutely hammered by New Zealand. And uh, all of a sudden, the, uh, the review from Reader's Favour came through from my short story, and it just went, oh, that makes the whole rugby match getting beaten by the All Blacks <laughs> a little bit better. <laughs> to deal with. So I was very happy about that. It's a real Irish American kind of story. And it's a, it's, it was the story of a, an Irish family that emigrated during the Great Famine to America. And it's got some tragedy in there, but it also has a nice ending. So um, I guess the, re the reader who I, apparently was American enjoyed the story immensely and gave me five stars. So I was really, really happy about that. Mm -hmm. And um, my other short stories, which I've really, I've enjoyed the format of doing the short story this year. I think it's been really wonderful. It, it enables you to get a lot down on paper without having to spend an immense amount of time on the editing, which you do with the novel. Whereas the short story, you can kind of, you can say what you want to say in a few thousand words and, um, you know, get it out there, get it published. And so I had another one that was, um, I think, yeah, sorry, there was another one from Reader's Favourite called The Two Faces of Killer Kilbride. That got an excellent review from Reader's Favourite. And I had one called Jeremiah Kildare and the Wolf of the Same County. And that got a top review from um, Book Angel UK, which was another um, site that I had been on. And they they love my So my short stories are doing great this year. That's They've been awesome. all getting very positive reviews and uh, super happy about them. I, I hope my poems get some decent reviews at some stage uh, soon as well, because um, I've written a whole load of them, some gibberish, but some good ones too. And uh, I'd like to I'd like to think that uh, perhaps one or two of them might resonate with people and, and perhaps uh, induce a few reviews going forward. So yeah, all happy. Robert, tell us how have you been uh, doing your marketing? Because that's one thing that a lot of um, new authors struggle with. Um, you know, they think that once you've published, you can sit back and fold your arms and just the money's just going to roll in. What have, what, what have your steps been uh, in terms of marketing? Well, I think marketing is a tough one for everybody. It doesn't matter who you are and it doesn't matter what stage of your writing career, may, unless, you're, unless you're a top, top writer who's doing very well. Um, if you're somebody just starting out, I think you'll probably find it a little bit daunting because... The first thing everybody does, they get on to Twitter, they get on to Instagram, you know, they're on Facebook and, you know, you're sending out posts and posts and perhaps nobody's paying any attention to them. And that's, I think some of it is maybe boils down to a little bit of persistence to try and build up an audience. I have, um, you know, I've tried to diversify certainly on the Instagram account. It's all just pictures of, you know, my travels, pictures of me being out and about. It's it's less to do with books than it is to do with trying to get people interested in the photographs that you've taken and maybe some of the things that you're, you've done in your life. And, and I think that's probably a good tip for anybody starting off. It, it's, it's tempting to go all in with the book or what it is you're writing. Um, a better idea is to probably just kind of step back from that and maybe um, take more time to develop content that is nothing, not so much related to books, but something that might get people's attention. Um, the other thing I've done is 
and I know where the show um, the Jetty said was going out on LinkedIn. I've also tried to do a little bit of networking on LinkedIn, which is kind of a, an aside from the usual marketing kind of stuff. It's just, you know, maybe connecting with people in the book industry and in the publishing industry and other authors and doing it on a platform that is not traditionally one that is used for marketing purposes, but more for networking purposes. But I'm hoping that that stuff will stand, stand me in good stead maybe going forward because it does allow you to at least, you know, you would know like we have this interview going out. I can now come along to, uh, to LinkedIn and post that I've been on the, the Writer's Corner Live and hopefully, you know, somebody might see that and watch the interview. And that's all good content for LinkedIn. Uh, you can also then, of course, you know, you've got to put it up on Facebook. I would suggest setting up a separate author page on under your author name on Facebook. And that way, not perhaps using that one so often, just kind of every time you have something really important to say, then put it up. Otherwise, it comes across as being a bit spammy or, you know, you're, you're bothering people every other day. Um, and then the same thing maybe on Twitter. If you've got, you know, I've been using it for when I'm running um, a special online. Some of the short stories and whatnot have been given away for, you know, free of charge. And you can do that with Amazon self-publishing. You can give away the ebook uh, free for a couple of days. And I'll just promote that on Twitter for, for the time that it's up there. And other websites can do that as well. I just retweet their stuff too. So um there's other things that other authors that have been have been doing and they're paying a lot of money for it i would say just be careful about some of that stuff i haven't really delved into that um i've done a couple of ads here and there but i've heard of other authors spending huge sums of money with no return so just i would mm -hmm. say to anybody mm -hmm. new just please be careful about what it is you're spending your money on you could be out there fucking out three, four, five hundred dollars and see no sales out of it, you know. So just, you know, take it easy, watch for what other authors have done, ask the people who have bought these things and spend some money on them, whether they have actually sold any books as a result of it. Uh, there are a couple of good platforms out there, and there's probably got possibly also a few that aren't so good, you know. So there seems to be a lot of people out there making money from authors instead of the author making money from their books. And, you know, that's just one of the downsides that I'd say. I don't want to be all negative, but I would say that that's just something that be careful, watch out for it, and take the advice of authors who are successful and who have been down this path before, because they'll probably tell you as much as anybody else that they can spend and spend and spend and say nothing out of it. Whereas if you go to a very good platform that's, you know, receiving high marks from authors on a consistent basis, they are the ones that you're probably a little bit safer in spending your money with. I found that a few of these sites, their, their primary audience is made up of authors. So the only person you're marketing into is another author, and they're not going to buy your book. They're trying right. to do the same thing as you're doing. There are no readers on those sites. They might have right. might tell you that they've got 10,000 followers, but 9,980 of them might be fellow authors trying to do the same thing that you're doing. Right. So, you know, be careful. And I, I always try to remember there was a thing that they used to say about the gold, uh, about the gold rush in San Francisco and the 49ers, that the people who made money from the gold rush were the guys selling the picks and the shovels as opposed to the people down in the mines. And there's something to be said about that in the book industry as well. There are lots of people making money out of it, and very few of them are the authors. So just be careful about who you send, about who you turn over your heart and cash to, because a lot of the time it just doesn't work and it's a waste of money. Um, get the advice of other people before you start spending. Amen. I guess you... I think you've given some very good advice there um, with regards to social media. You know, uh, one thing that you can do as an author before your book is published, if you're not well known on social media, start those accounts well in advance before your book gets published and start creating relationships with people because people buy from people that they know, like, and trust. 
So you want to start working on that, working on those relationships well before your book is published. Talk about other stuff. Pull the curtain back on who you are. Um, and, you know, if people have gotten, had the time to get to know you by the time you become a published author um, or before your next book comes out, you've built those relationships. And I really appreciate what you're saying there. And you're 100% spot on. Do not post relentlessly about your book. People mm. are going to unfollow you. You know, um, people don't like being sold to. Right. Tell I'm them your stories. Sure. Or push. They don't like to be pushed. Yeah. I mean, I made the mistake. We all make the mistake, but I think you learn from it. And so the advice I'd pass on to other people is just, you know, try and as, as Brigetti said, build relationships. That is a good idea there. And um, I've started to put up stuff even on Twitter, just being out and about some nice pictures of the trees and how they've changed color in this season up mm -hmm. here in the Northern Hemisphere. And, and stuff like that, and people kind of warm to that. They kind of go, oh, that's that's a lovely picture you've taken there. You know, and um, that way, you're, you know, it's not about the book or it's not about you trying to sell stuff to them. It's about you trying to build that relationship. And that's always a good thing. Well, also information, you know, like um, information about, I, I posted something this morning. Um, I came across this article about this mom whose child has, cerebral palsy, but he wanted to, he, you'll see it on my, my feed, but he wanted to um, skateboard. So his mom came up oh, with yeah. this contraption to help him. And what a great story, right? To share that with other people. So I, I think also sharing information of things that people can relate to that's the kind of beyond you, but it's like, Hey, we're kind of all sharing this. You know, we're all kind of in this together and, um, you know, this is a feel good story. People love feel good stories and they do love good photographs. I know that because I, I enjoy looking at photographs that are really, you know, uh, photographs invoke emotion and thoughts and feelings from us. And it's the same thing that we're trying to do with writing and, and motion picture and TV shows is invoke emotion and feelings and things from people, you know, and that's why we watch them and we read them. Right. So it, we can feel so. You know, it is good to kind of have a just a, a a a variety of different things, you know, that you're putting out there. And also, there is a lot of work with social media that that probably wasn't the the way five, ten years ago for authors. But for us authors who are out there now, our lives basically are um, controlled almost by social media and the sense of getting yourself out there. And it does take up it does take time. You've got, you've got to put that time in there to post and to follow and to, you know, reach out to others and make those connections. And so you, you have to kind of, you have to put that in your time, you know? So there's, sure. there's, I, work to it. there's one other thing I'd say is doing stuff like this is wonderful for an mm -hmm. author. I've now done, like I've done a couple of blogs, I've done a couple of interviews and I would say to anybody starting out there, the things you should be trying to get organized. And it's wonderful to come on and do a show like this. It's just great. It gets you some exposure and it gets you chatting to other authors. And then you start following the other broadcasts then that come after you and you start listening to what they have to say as well. And it's a wonderful way to connect with other writers and people who are passionate about writing. And uh, so I would say, yeah, try and get on, maybe try and get on a, on a local radio show, uh, try and get into a, a, an interview, try and do a podcast, anything that will get your name out there. That's a little bit more than just posting something on Facebook or posting sure, something on Twitter. Sure. If you've got a, 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 a platform to speak with somebody and get your message out there and tell the story of your book yeah. and your writing experience in a fun way. Well, that's great. People kind of like that stuff. So I would say, you know, try and get on an interview, try and get on this show if you can. It's wonderful. It's great to be able to talk to you guys. It's just, you make, you make the whole experience so lovely and so nice and so wonderful that you're relaxed, you're having a good time. And before you know, the, the half hour is over. So, any aspiring writers out there, this is a good place to start. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, we are out of time. 
And so to anyone watching, if you want to be in the running for our giveaway with huge thanks to Robert, type in hashtag gibberish. So if you type in hashtag gibberish, you're in the running for our draw. Um, and then we also just want to announce that our winner for last week um, of the giveaway is Tish Rosales. Tish, congratulations. You are the winner of our giveaway for last week. So in closing, Robert, can you tell everyone how they can connect with you? And thank you for the giveaway. No problem. Yeah, um, I'm looking forward to giving away my book. I hope they don't think it's too much gibberish, but uh, <laughs> I'm really looking forward to seeing what people have to say about it. Um, I can get it in a PDF form or an e-mobile, whichever works for the um, contest winner. But I am, as I said, I'm on all those social media platforms and I'm on LinkedIn for any writer who wants to connect there. I know sometimes we don't mention that one, but I am there if anybody would like to talk. And I also have a website under Robert E. Kearns as well. So I'm available and I'm out there and ready to, uh, to connect with other writers and readers. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Robert, thank you so much. It was wonderful thank having you. you on the show. And it's been uh, so fantastic. So, from Cape Town, it's goodbye, everyone. And from the USA, it's goodbye. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.